Hello everyone, today we'll be taking a look at an unofficial build of Nitrogen OS 2 for the Pixel 2. This is a Feature Plus ROM built on top of Android Pie, thanks to Munchy underscore Cool for compiling the ROM for our walleye, and of course the development team behind Nitrogen OS. So let's go over a drawback to flashing any custom ROM on the Pixel 2. The active edge gesture to summon the Google Assistant doesn't work. Unfortunately, Google hasn't opened up the source for developers to integrate this into custom ROMs, so no matter how hard you squeeze, you won't get a response at all. And now for some standout features of Nitrogen OS. Nitrogen OS 2 has an alternative to Google's imagination of navigation gestures. This one does away with the navigation bar entirely, so you can finally utilize the entire screen. So how this works is that the bottom of the screen is divided into three sections, the left, the right, and the center. To go back, you need to swipe up on either the left or right hand side, to go home, swipe up from the middle, don't swipe up too short as that will switch you back to your previous app, and to access the recents menu, swipe up from the center and just hold, and to go back to your previous app, swipe up a tiny bit from the center and hold there. I find this system very easy to use, although I still don't think it's quick enough when it comes to task switching. This is also due to the fact that you can't change the gestures actions. You'll also have to be quite intentional with your swiping, as it might think you're just trying to scroll down at times. When Android Pie was released, they stripped away the extended options from the quick settings. So previously on Oreo and below, you were able to tap on the bottom text area of the quick settings tile to access a more detailed view of the setting, without leaving the notification shade. In Nitrogen OS, they've brought it back, so tapping on the tile will toggle the setting, tapping and holding on the tile will access the settings item inside the settings app, and now, when you tap on the text below, such as the Wi-Fi network name, you'll be greeted with the extended quick settings so you can connect to a different Wi-Fi network without leaving the current app that you're in. Currently, only Wi-Fi and Bluetooth tiles have the extended quick settings. Now on the XDA thread, it does say substratum in the title, so I was thinking that they had cherry-picked some commits for rootless substratum, or to make installing themes not require a reboot of the phone. But after some further reading, it turns out that rootless installation of overlays was never intended by Google, and so the method used to install OMS overlays without root was actually disclosed as a security vulnerability, but as usual, substratum can be used in its root mode, so you will be able to install themes as you did before. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is that nothing is different with substratum on Android Pie. Unfortunately, there is no system-wide dark theme on this ROM. You can't change the accent colors either without installing a custom overlay via substratum. Overall, when I was using Nitrogen OS for a week, I didn't notice any poor performance or poor battery usage. It seemed really normal to me, so very close to stock. Magisk was stable on this ROM, I was using Magisk 17.3 beta, and also upgraded to the new version, 18, on this ROM without any issues, even after hiding Magisk Manager. This ROM comes with Google Apps pre-installed. Here are some of the user-facing Google Apps. So we have the Google Camera, the Google App, the Play Store, Project Fi, Google Setup Wizard, Digital Wellbeing, and the usual assortment of Google Framework Apps. The ROM also comes with some AOS apps too. We have the Calculator, Calendar, Clock, Contacts, Email, Files, Gallery, Messaging, and Phone. I really like the amount of tweaks in which they have bundled in their customizations menu. I would consider using this ROM for an extended period of time for sure. Nothing feels too off about it if you know what I mean. So now let's dig into what you can do on this ROM. Nitrogen OS provides a nice variety of additional settings and tweaks. I'll be going over each menu item and you can find the timestamps in the more info if you want to skip to particular sections. A few of these can actually be done on StockPie via the system UI tuner. You'll be able to select which status bar items you wish to have displayed up there. You can also customize the battery icon between portrait, circle, dotted circle, text, or hidden. Here you can also change where you want to see the battery percentage, either hidden but still appears when you plug it in to your charger, next to the icon on the right hand side, or within the icon, move over to the right hand side when you're plugging your phone to charge it. You can choose to disable the USB debugging notification as well. And finally, you can also show the network traffic in the status bar, along with being able to set the auto-hide threshold of it. On to the quick settings. 
You can change the opacity of the quick settings area like so. You can choose to hide the brightness slider and also have it on the bottom of the screen for easier access. You can hide the warnings on the footer such as messages when you are connected via a VPN. You can change if you want a little vibration when you touch a quick settings tile. Currently you can change the default behavior of the volume buttons. You can enable long press when the screen is off to control your music. Volume up is to skip to the end of the song and volume down is to skip to the beginning. You can set the volume rocker to wake your phone, although I could only get this to work with the always on display disabled. You can use the volume buttons for the text cursor control like so. You can also change which volume button does what as well. And finally, you can enable this to pick up calls with the volume button. Here you can choose to enable or disable the navigation bar, useful if you're looking to use the built-in gestures or a third-party alternative. Over in navigation buttons, you can change the layout of the buttons either normal, compact, left-leaning, or right-leaning. You can also choose what the special left and right buttons do. From there you can change the action to either clipboard. It will paste what you had last copied when you drag the icon over to another text field, keycode, it will essentially act as another button. You can have a look at the key codes here on the Android developers website. So for example, if you want to make the left extra act as a play slash pause button, look for a corresponding action here. So I'll be looking for key code underscore media underscore play underscore pause. And once you find it, click on the hyperlink and you'll be taken to the details here. You'll want to import the decimal constant value as the key code. And then whenever you press the button, for the extra left button, it should play or pause your music. Confirm rotate and keyboard switcher. This is usually the right hand side by default. Depending on the current state of your device, it will appear as a keyboard to switch input methods or to rotate the device's screen if you have turned off auto rotate and you have rotated your device. We have a few menus here. First off in the AOSP gestures, we have the standard affair of Android Pie gestures and these are the same ones as on stock Pi. Navigation gestures, they're just as I had gone over in the beginning of the video. Again, I really do like the implementation of this. There's an option to turn on the flashlight by holding the power button when the screen is off. And you can also set an auto shut off timer as well, just in case you activate it in your pocket. You can also enable double tap to sleep on both the status bar and on the lock screen, only within the top third or the bottom shortcut area. Now onto the lock screen options. You can enable charging information, which will display the negotiated charges max current and voltage and battery temperature. You can disable fingerprint authentication vibration. You can enable unlocking the device on successful face unlock. You can modify the left and right lock screen shortcuts to launch an app or an app shortcut. Then there's also an additional setting called auto unlock, but I haven't been able to figure out what the difference it makes. Whether or not it's enabled, it will still ask for my pattern, and it doesn't show every app, which is unfortunate. This is the exact same thing I had on Resurrection Remix Oreo as well. And finally, you can choose to show the current media's cover art on the lock screen. Next up is the power menu. First option is to enable the power menu on the lock screen. Then the rest of the options are things that you can add to the power menu. For advanced reboot, tap once to reboot into recovery, and tap and hold to reboot your phone into the bootloader. This menu covers heads up notifications, LED lights, and in call options. Within heads up, you can disable heads up notifications, although there is no replacement for it, such as the old fashioned notification ticker, the icon will just appear in the notification bar. You can also adjust the duration or timeout of the heads up notification so you can hide it sooner or later. You can also change the default snooze timer if you swipe up on the heads up notification. You can also disable heads up notifications when you are using specific apps and adding them to the stop list. You can also disable heads up notifications for specific apps by adding them to the blacklist. You can choose to enable or disable the battery charging light and change its colors and brightness. There's an option to enable the battery light when do not disturb is enabled. You can also enable the low battery blinking light. To change the color of the light, Tap on the state you wish to change and from there you can choose any shade of color you please. To reset it, press that reset icon beside the color circle. Within notifications light, 
It looks like you can disable apps from activating the notification light, although I haven't had much success with that. It just seems to disable app notifications instead of just the notification light. You can also toggle the blinking notification light within apps and notifications, then within the notifications menu. You can make the phone vibrate when your call connects. You can make it vibrate when it is awaiting connection. You can also make it vibrate on disconnect. I personally find the vibrate on connect and disconnect very useful. Now finally we have the miscellaneous options. First is a wake lock blocker to stop those pesky wake locks from keeping your phone awake when it should be sleeping. Be careful with what you enable as it may break some functionality in apps and functions. Next is an alarm blocker. Not exactly the same as wake locks, but these events that wake up the device for it to carry out time specific actions or functions. App Ops is a permissions manager for all the apps on your phone. It will categorize your apps by permission usage and upon selecting an app, you can choose to enable and disable access to certain aspects of your device and is not only limited to the usual permission set of location and contacts as well. And finally, two options to wake your phone on charge and to overlay the CPU info. And just one other thing, you can also clear your battery statistics as well with this icon here under the battery menu. Alrighty, so that brings us to an end of my Nitrogen OS 2 review for the Pixel 2. Of course, this is an unofficial build, so please do keep that in mind. And also definitely check out the XDA thread for more details and updates to the ROM and if you have any problems as well since I didn't make this thing. So thanks for watching guys and as always you can leave your comments down below or even better yet join us on Discord where we can chat about whatever you like and that includes more tech stuff or if you need help with one of my other videos so please feel free to join that link is also down in the more info and as always thank you so much for watching and happy flashing.